What do you do when you and your partner are not on the same page? It's hard, right? Because your spouse, your partner is someone that you're supposed to, you want to, right? You want to hopefully spend the rest of your life with. But when you're not aligned uh, in terms of values or in terms of the direction that you want to head um, or even what you want out of life, you know, when you're not aligned, then you're not each other's cheerleaders. There's less give and take. There's a divide. And that gap is often a gap that you want to ignore, where you want to let things go unsaid. You don't want to broach the subject. You don't want to push it. But there's a gap there. And if ultimately you want to stay together, then it's something that you have to address. The other day, my wife told me that I'm too perfect, that she only sees my strength, she only sees the optimism, and that I'm not vulnerable enough. And she was telling me this because it makes her feel worse about her own struggles. Because she's married to someone who seems to have it all together, who appears to be disciplined, and who seems to have confidence and a can-do attitude and is willing to work hard and put in the effort and put in the time. She's married to that person. And she's telling me that it's hard for her to face her own struggles when she spends so much time with that person. This is my wife. We've been married 15 years. We've been together for 20. We parent four kids together. We've spent more years of our life together than we actually have apart, funny enough. And she says that I don't show enough vulnerability, which is crazy to me because I rarely feel like I have it all together. I rarely feel like I'm good enough or that I work hard enough, or that I'm disciplined enough, or that I have high enough standards, or that I have a strong enough vision, or that I'm even like the husband, or the father, or the leader that everyone in my life deserves. You see, I want to be strong. I want to be disciplined and to do scary, hard, and difficult things. I want to be more competitive. I want to live with less anxiety and to play uh, a bigger game. I wanna be proud of myself. I want others to look at me with admiration. I want a team that has my back through thick and thin. I wanna build something that can really help others, something that can make a massive impact and something that's ultimately that I can be really, really proud of. But in the back of my mind, this is what I hear. I want to be strong. But Mark, come on. You're not really that strong. Remember that? There was that time that this happened or that happened. I want to be disciplined. Oh, but Mark, you give up so easily. I want to do hard and difficult and scary things. Why do you always run away from things so much? I want to be more competitive. Mm, but you don't really care enough, do you? I want to live life with less anxiety but i hear in the back of my mind it goes oh, it's easy to say now when things are calm but just wait just wait and see how things will be you'll be freaking out soon enough i want to play a bigger game what makes you think you can do that i want to be proud of myself in the back of my mind all i think is that's so self-centered i want others to look at me with admiration it makes me uncomfortable even to say it out loud, even though it's true. So all I think is, why are you so ego-driven? I want to build something that really helps people. In the back of my mind, all I think is everyone says it. Everybody says that. So my wife only sees strength, and yet in my head, all I hear is that you're a nobody. You're worthless. You're a nothing. You're just playing at this when everyone else is doing it. You don't have it. You don't got it. You don't have what it takes. That's what I hear in my head. That's what I'm fighting. That's what I hear. That's, that's my thing. Because no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, if you're playing a bigger game, and if you're stepping outside of your comfort zone, and if ultimately you fear failing, there are going to be voices in your head. The voices of doubt are not gonna go away, which I've learned to live with and I've come to understand that they're just lies because the voices are only true 
if I choose to listen to them. They only become real if I say them out loud. I want to be the type of person who proves doubt wrong in my head. The voices, my voices, the voices of others, the voices of doubters, the voices of people who don't even have the guts to tell me to my face what they really think. So what do you do when your spouse and you are not on the same page? You talk. You don't fear having the conversation. You don't fear hearing uh, all the things that you did wrong, the mistakes that you made based off of the way the other person feels. You don't get defensive. You don't get angry. You don't try to explain it away. You just talk and you listen. You listen to what they have to say and you hope that they listen to what you have to say. Because what I've learned in the 15 years we've been married, the 20 years together, the four kids we have, the parents, all that stuff. What I've learned in that time is that when we can talk things out, when we can share our hopes and our dreams and our fears, when we can talk about what's going on in our world, how we feel, how the other person makes us feel, how we feel, we can get on the same team. We're not playing a solo game. We're not playing against each other. We're not even like on a relay race where one person has a turn and then you pass it off and the next person has a turn. We are now on the same team playing a pair sport. We have to be on the same team playing that pair sport because it's us together against the world. And you may not always agree, but if you can get onto the same side, if you can see each other's point of view and come to understand how the other person feels and why they're feeling the way that they're feeling, you very, very quickly will both come to be on the same page. And that is what you want because it's good for both of you. So there you have it. Until next time, remember that you have to think big. You've got to be bold and you must say yes. If you like this video, I think you're actually going to dig this one right there a lot. Check it out and I will see you over there.